Good morning, everyone. Welcome to St. James and St. Brendan's Anglican Church for Wednesday, February 14th. It's Ash Wednesday, and happy Valentine's Day. As we begin our service of worship, we acknowledge the land in which we gather on is the traditional territory, first of the Neutral people, and then the Haudenosaunee people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaties, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Let us continue to work towards reconciliation with our siblings, and always remember that our great standard of living is directly related um, to the Indigenous people's resources and their care for this land. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our brokenness may obtain of you, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Announce to my people your rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. Yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day and oppress all your workers. Look, you fast only to quarrel and to fight and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. Is such a, the fast that I choose, a day to humble oneself? is to bow down the head like a bulrush and to lie in sackcloth and ashes. Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house when you see the naked to cover them not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vind vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry, and satisfy the needs of the afflicted. Then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom light be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall raise up the foundations of many generations you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of the streets to live in. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm this Wednesday is Psalm 103, verses 8 through 18. Today the psalm will be said with the refrain, The Lord remembers that we are but dust. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and of great kindness. He will not always accuse us, 
nor will he keep his anger forever. The Lord remembers that we are but dust. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor rewarded us according to our wickedness. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so is his mercy great upon those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our sins from us. As a father cares for his children, so does the Lord care for those who fear him. The Lord remembers that we are but dust. For he himself knows whereof we are made. He remembers that we are but dust. Our days are like the grass. We flourish like a flower of the field. The Lord remembers that we are but dust. When the wind goes over it, it is gone, and its place shall know it no more. But the merciful goodness of the Lord endures forever on those who fear him, and his righteousness on children's children, on those who keep his covenant and remember his commandments and do them. The Lord remembers that we are but dust. The second reading is from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians. We entreat you on behalf of Christ. We reconcile to God. For our sake he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that he him, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See now is the acceptable time. See now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves to every way through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger by purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech, and the power of God with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honor and dishonor, in ill repute and good repute, we are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts, sorry, may only God's words be spoken and may only God's message be heard. Amen. Kathy, can I ask a big favor? My keys are on the table there. Will you head into my office and get some new batteries? Because my microphone is dead, which is fine for now, but it won't be when I have to do the blessing of ashes. Thank you. Ash Wednesday. It's a busy, busy day. Um, my first year in seminary, this was the first sermon I preached. Um, it was at Grace Church in Waterdown, and uh, Jeff Ward was a minister, the priest there, and he came up to me and said, okay, we have a busy service, keep it short. So. Hopefully, I'm keeping it short. Um, in my previous life as a pastoral associate, um, I used to prepare the little ones for First Communion. And I would always ask them, what is more important, Easter or Christmas? Well, 99.9% .9 of the times, little ones are going to say what? Christmas. Because that's when Santa comes, and that's when they get presents. And you really can't argue that logic with little ones. But eventually, I would have to tell them that it was Easter. Because Easter is when Jesus did the greatest miracle ever. He died and rose from the dead. And I would always say, and if Jesus hadn't died and rose from the dead, Christmas would just be somebody's birthday. So Christmas, Easter, is the most important day. We celebrate Jesus' death and resurrection. And like most celebrations, we have to prepare. We started yesterday with Shrove Tuesday, or they call it Fat Tuesday, the day when you are supposed to put all your leftovers, all your meats, all your butters, all your oils, and you're supposed to cook them all and eat them all because during the season of Lent, you're supposed to go without. We have today where we have the official mark of Lent and where in a bit, thank you, in a bit we will be having ashes placed on our forehead. So I wanna talk about preparing for a party. I don't know about you, but when I have company over, I am a crazy person. I spend days planning what the food's gonna be, what the appetizers are gonna be, what the dessert's gonna be, what the drinks are gonna be. I'm going shopping, I'm running around cleaning my house. I'm doing 101 things at once. Now, I do all this because I want people to feel comfortable, I want people to feel welcome, I wanna be a good hostess. And I, I say now that I run around like a crazy person. I never used to until my, both my children, unbeknownst to them, each sent me the same video on YouTube. And I'm going to, I didn't put it in the screen, um, but Google it if you can on YouTube. It's called Company is Coming. And it is this lovely mother 
running around like a crazy woman, you know, telling everybody what they need to do. And I just started to giggle because the honest to goodness truth was that was me. And that's how the kids saw me. This over the top crazy person getting ready for company. Company who's only going to stay for a few hours. So the question, how much time are you willing to prepare for somebody who died and rose from the dead to save you? When we all have company, we go out of our way to make sure our house looks nice, that we have good food, that people feel welcome. How much time are you willing to prepare for the person who brought us closer to God? So many people today you will see walking around with ashes on their forehead. We have six weeks, 40 days, give or take, to celebrate and prepare for Jesus' coming. In the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus spent 40 days in the desert fasting, 40 days preparing for his three-year journey, 40 days where he was tempted by Satan. We are not being asked to go out into the desert. We are not being asked to give up anything, really, we don't fast the way we used to. We've come to realize that fasting the way our ancestors used to do isn't healthy. We know better now. We prepare by putting ashes on our forehead and remembering that we are dust and to dust we shall return. And by the grace of God and by the ashes on the forehead, we are reminded of our humanity and we are given the next six weeks to prepare. I wrote in the beacon, actually, and you guys got handed out the beacon, so please read it if, if you haven't. Um, Lent is about fasting, giving alms, and praying. And when I say fasting, I don't mean necessarily always going without. Ash Wednesday is a day of fasting. It's a day when we're not supposed to be having any form of indulgence, you know, meat, dairy, just basic stuff, maybe some broth, maybe some veggies, keeping it simple, extra day of prayer. Fasting, maybe giving something up, something that's a struggle, something that's difficult. I'm a TV junkie, and I'm fasting for that. I'm giving that up, not because I'm bragging here, like they said in the scriptures not to do. I'm doing it as a way to spend more time with God. Instead of sitting on my butt and just zoning out, I'm going to take the opportunity to read more, to pray more. That's what fasting needs to look like. Giving alms, if you give alms, you know, if you're one of those people who give up coffee or Tim Hortons, the money that you would have spent, put in a jar. And when Lent is done, give that money to Food with Friends, United Way, Meals on Wheels, giving that little extra and pray. For the month of Lent, for the month of Lent, for the six weeks of Lent, every Friday, we're going to have the stations across here. I hope you come. If you're not somebody who normally comes to the healing mass on Thursday, um, I invite you to come. Come to Tuesday morning prayer. Prayer is a conversation. It's a way for us to get closer to God, to listen to God. Lent is a personal journey. 
It's not meant to be us running around like crazy people preparing for company. It's about taking time to slow down, meditate, reflect, listen to God. I invite you to join me on this journey of preparation. I invite you to deepen your faith and grow closer to Christ. Amen. Sorry for the technical difficulties. Dear friends in Christ, every year at this time, the Christian Passover, we celebrate our redemption through the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Lent is a time to prepare for this celebration and to renew our life in the Paschal Mystery. We begin this holy season by remembering our need for repentance and for the mercy and forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. We begin our journey to Easter with the signs of ashes, an ancient sign, speaking of the fragility and the uncertainty of human life, and marking the penitence of the community as a whole. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Lord, to observe a holy Lent by self-examination, penitence, prayer, fasting, almsgiving, reading, and meditating on the word of God. At this moment, I ask that you either continue to sit or kneel if you are comfortable. We are going to say Psalm 51, verses 1 to 13, with the refrain, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your loving kindness. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sins. Create in me a clean heart, O God. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you only I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight. Create in me a clean heart, O God. And so you are justified when you speak and upright in your judgment. Indeed, I have been wicked from my birth, a sinner from my mother's womb. Create in me a clean heart, O God. For behold, you look for truth deep within me and will make me understand wisdom secretly. Purge me from my sin, and I shall be pure. Wash me, and I shall be clean indeed. Make me hear of joy and gladness, that the body you have broken may rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. Clean in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. 
Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Give me the joy of your saving help again and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. I shall teach you ways. I shall teach your ways to the wicked and sinners shall return to you. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Deliver me from death, O God, and my tongue shall sing of your righteousness, O God of my salvation. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Create in me a clean heart, O God. Had you desired it, I would have offered sacrifice, but you take no delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a troubled spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God. Together we say, Most holy and merciful Father, we confess to you, to one another, and to the whole communion of saints in heaven and on earth that we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, Lord. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Christ served us. We have not been true to the mind of Christ. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, Lord. We confess to you, Lord, all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, Lord, our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of other people. We confess to you, Lord, our anger at our own frustration and our envy at those more fortunate than ourselves. We confess to you, Lord, our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts and our dishonesty in daily life and work. We confess to you, Lord, our negligence in prayer and worship and our failure to commend the faith that is in us. We confess to you, Lord. Accept our repentance, Lord, for the wrongs we have done for our blindness to human need and suffering and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, Lord, for all false judgments, for uncharitable thoughts towards our neighbors, and for our prejudice and contempt toward those who differ from us. Accept our repentance, Lord, for our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us. Accept our repentance, Lord. Restore us, good Lord, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. Let us pray. Almighty God, from the dust of earth you have created us. We ask that you bless these ashes, which will remind us that we are dust. May these ashes be for us a sign of our mortality and penitence, and a reminder that only by your gracious gift we are given eternal life through Jesus Christ. Dear friends, these ashes are a sign of our repentance and humility. They remind us that we are to die to sin and be born again in new creation. As we begin the journey of Lent, I invite you to receive in your own hearts this mark of pilgrimage and commit yourselves afresh to the journey of faith, looking always to Jesus Christ. Please come forward to receive your ashes.
Accomplish in us, O God, the work of our salvation, that we may show forth your glory. By the cross and passion of your Son, O Lord, bring us to the saints. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you of all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Let's share each other a sign of peace. Please stand. Let us pray. Merciful God, turn us from sin to faithfulness. Accept our offering and prepare us to celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ our Savior, who is alive and reigns with you now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and good 
to give you thanks and praise, Almighty God and Everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days, you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through the, a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline, we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting and prayer and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through the study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with the saints and angels forever praising you and saying, Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. O Zion in the highest, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Zion in the highest. Please be seated. Lord, you are holy indeed and the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, that these gifts of bread and wine may be, the body, may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ is the bread of life and we eat this bread and drink this cup to proclaim your death, Lord Jesus, until you come in glory. So Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice once made for sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send your Holy Spirit on your people and gather into your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever, amen. We break this bread, communion in Christ's body once broken. Let your church be the wheat which bears its fruit in dying. If we have died with him, we shall live with him. If we hold firm, we shall reign with him. These are the gifts of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Please join us at the Lord's table. Let us pray. God of compassion, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you reconciled your people to yourself. Following his example of prayer and fasting, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Glory to God whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation, in the church and in Christ Jesus, forever and ever. Amen. May God the Father who does not despise the broken spirit give you a contrite heart. 
May Christ, who bore our sins in his body on the tree, heal you by his wounds. May the Holy Spirit, who leads us all in truth, speak to you, speak to your words of pardon and peace. And may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Please be seated. We still have announcements. Always take advantage of when you can make announcements. Uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you to everybody who came to our pancake lunch yesterday, all those who were in the kitchen. Um, yesterday was just entertaining in the kitchen. I don't know if those who were in the hall could hear the laughter, but it was a lot of fun. And um, so thank you for everybody who helped, and thank you for everybody who came. Um, just wanted everybody to know that Teze is this weekend. So Sunday um, at uh, 6.30, we have Teze. On February 25th, uh, again, is Vestry. We have 9.30 service, um, and then Vestry after, and then the 4 p.m. praise and worship service, followed by fellowship across the street at the Belmont. And now that we are officially in Lent, next Wednesday is our first um, Lenten service. It's our ecumenical service. Um, where other preachers from the other churches come in. We have guest musicians, guest singers. Um, so that starts next Wednesday. It's from 12 to 12.30. And then I invite you to join us over in the Guild Hall for lunch. Um, every Wednesday, there's different soups. You get a choice of two soups with dessert, coffee, tea, and a roll for $10. You can't beat it. So um, I hope that you will join us um, for all of the stuff that is happening here, especially during Lent. Our service is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>